Okay, we're here. Ask Archie's old man. And uh, we're looking at number two. This is a question from Phil Alexander. And uh, I'll just read the question there. Since you are an accountant, have you seen under the hood? You Sorry. Since you are an accountant, you have seen under the hood of many businesses. And I'm sure some of them had surprising financials. I mean, the money coming in has shocked you in a good way. Now, what are some of those stories? Please be specific without breaking any confidences. For example, I knew a chiropractor who had an unemployed cousin live across from a hospital. And when a car pulled in, and when a car pulled up that was in an accident, he wrote down the license and the chiro called them the next day. The insurance would pay for the physiotherapy and he got to the injured people first. So we want to hear about some um, some stories there. Under the hood. Under the hood. Well, first of all, I'll preface it by saying in Australia, um, if an accountant gets involved or is aware of these things, um, it's a criminal offence to help or partake or um, help help a person to avoid tax or uh, understand his tax or do wrong things. So uh, that's very dangerous and, and it's not worth um, uh, uh, charging a person $400 for dodgy advice or helping do dodgy things and then find out that you've lost your income of two or 300000 a year because of that stupidity. And, and, and you've told many clients to fuck off, haven't you? <laughs> We've told many clients to... Um, Dodgy not, clients to fuck off. You don't want anything to do with we them. We don't want anything to do with them, yeah. yeah because it's going to hurt us. And it's not a question of hurting us. If the tax department is after us, then it also hurts another 50 or 100 of our clients because they're going to audit them and give them a hard time. So, so we, we have a policy of not... Um, getting involved uh, 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 on these things. But some interesting stories. Um, uh, when um, I was in the Merchant Bank, uh, this happened a long time ago, so in the names, uh, uh, nobody would know. But there was a, 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 a person who sold paper. He, he, he uh, had a big warehouse and he had massive, massive um, uh, uh, store of paper. And, and uh, um, so the tax department came and uh, audited him and they found out that um, the thing called investment allowance, he'd claimed, overclaimed, and he had to pay back $100 to the tax department, and, uh, and, um, you know, and, and he's going to be penalised $50 for doing that. Now, the gentleman was taken aback, and he just cried and cried. The client cried, and the tax department said, look, look, it's not that serious. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll reduce the $50 penalty to maybe $40. Um, look, it's not that serious, but we, we, we found this minor thing, and, and um, you know, so... So don't take it too seriously. It's not very important. And I said, oh, uh, so why were you crying? He said, well, he said, do you know why I was really crying? I said, no, I know I don't. He said, what happened? He said, the tax department came and they found this piddly thing. He said, I had 400,000 of paper, which I was hiding across the, across the road in a separate warehouse as a hidden reserve, and they didn't find it. I was so happy they didn't find it. That's why I was crying. So that's one case. Another case we had um, in, back in the, uh, in, in the bad times uh, when interest rates were 17, 18, 19, 21 percent we were charging from Chase Manhattan. Uh, we were charging very high interest rates because the interest rates were high and things were getting pretty tough. And this gentleman had uh, a couple of units at Coolum, which is a seaside resort, a, a, a few, five, five at Coolum, five at Perigian Beach and five at St. Lucia, which is where the University of Queensland is. And um, so he had these units, and um, he fell behind in payments. And he was much behind, and he rang me up and said, well, what do I do? And I said, what's the problem? He said, well, I can't pay. I said, well, the Merchant Bank has a very simple policy. They, you come out there, 30 days after you've fallen behind, we get a stick um, out of the boot with a sign on, Mor auction, mortgage in possession, 30 days' time. He said, oh, I can't do that. Anyway, he said, I said to him, well, you've got to do something. He said, well, I've got a problem. I've got a Mercedes-Benz and, uh, you know, the, uh, important politicians are coming to my place shortly. So what do I do? And I said, well, what do you think you should do? He said, oh, I've got the answer. I'll, I'll, I said, well, well, tell me now. He said, no, no, when I see you next time, I'll tell you. So next time I saw him, I said, what have you done now? All the arrears are cleared. You've solved all the problem. 
He said, well, well, well I did. I, I just did some extra surgery. I said, well, what do you mean? You're like, that you, you sort of got referrals from other people? He said, no, 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 no. He said, uh, four weeks ago, if your wife had come along and said, look, I've got a pain here, he'd say, oh, well, you know, women's problems, take a Panadol, uh, you'll be right, let's see what happens. But now he'd say, hey, hey, that's serious. I saw a case like that the other day. Um, j just hang on there, I'll ring the ambulance, we'll take you to the hospital straight away, we'll do uh, just exploratory surgery, and whilst we're there, we'll take your appendix out for another $100. And um, he cleared the arrears. Now, whether, you know, as professional judgment or whether he was chasing money is, is for the viewers to decide. But that's the type of thing that could happen and has happened in the past uh, dodgy situation. So just be careful with your doctor. And uh, you, you also had a story where you had a, you had a client who was a real estate agent, no names to protect the guilty, who punched his wife in front of you guys. Well, yeah, um, this real estate agent, he'd... Uh, um, he had helped, he had a divorce and he didn't have much money left and, and this new wife had uh, milked all his money and uh, taken all his money and he helped her build a house and he, 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 she milked him and milked him and milked him and then he comes in and she said, well, I want more, I want more, I want, you know, and um, she, she irritated him and, uh, and he said, well, I've got nothing left, you, you can't take blood out of a stone and she said, I'll have everything, I'll, I'll, I'll have your balls, everything, you know. So he just went whack and, and just knocked her out, straight out in front of the office, in, in front of me in the office. And um, then, of course, she wants to, um, writes me a letter saying, can you, did you see what happened? And I, <laughs> I don't want to get involved. I said, I was looking the other way, I, didn't, I just saw you lying on the floor, I, I didn't really know what happened. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, you do. Well, you uh, told him to fuck off, you didn't want that sort of clientele. Well, well, well I, I didn't want sort of uh, people doing that sort of thing and then sort of wanting you to testify in court against them. I mean, how, how do you make money out of that situation? You don't want people like that. So, so he, he went elsewhere and so did his wife. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, that's, that's how it goes there. It's much better to be honest, really, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, these businesses that, that do dodgy things, they don't really survive the long term. No, they don't. They don't. Um, like, you were in a situation where you were running the computer business and the guy across the road was... Uh, uh, lodging false uh, declarations for sales tax mm. and um, he got so desperate in the end that he was caught uh, he had his face redone mm. he had a false British passport mm. and he was caught at the airport and yeah, it's not good that is it you know it's just it's just it's just seriously if it if it gets that hard in business you're better off getting a job yeah, yeah. working for someone else yeah and um, it's, it's it's just it's just just hassle it's, it's just if, hassle if you, if you can't make money legally well, don't do it at all. And, and uh, alternatively, you, you know, if you're selling drugs or doing something stupid, you get caught, you pay the price. That's and, right. um, uh, and that's uh, certainly avoiding um, you know, your, your tax obligations or um, requirements mm. of the government on certain things. And I mean, I mean there, there's nothing wrong with legitimately minimising the no. tax you pay. No. That's no. different that's to yeah. clear avoidance. That's right. That, that, that's a very different thing. Exactly. As Kerry Packer said, he said that, you know, you know, he was, he was at the, the, the Royal, he was, he was before, I think it was the Senate. Yeah. And he said, I don't think the government does such a good job that we should pay more. Yeah, yeah. But he said, he wants to minimise his taxes legally. That's different to clear avoidance. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Clear avoidance. Okay, fuckers, there you go. That's the, that's the, that's the moral of the story. Try and be good out there. Okay, that's the way it goes. No, it's, it's an interesting thing. I, I tell you, well, I had a friend who was a real estate agent. <clears throat> and this is the problem. When you do dodgy things, this is the problem. He was a real estate bit agent, right? And he was an older guy. He owned a big, big property at Tuong. You know, Tuong's circle there, near there. And he was sort of semi-retired, so he put another guy in charge who he liked. It was all going well until he realized the trust account was short $100,000. This is going back when that was a lot of money. It's like about 400000 today. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'm going to the police. You've, you're thieving. He said, you go to the police. I'll tell the tax department about your, your racket. Mm -hmm. So he's, you're over a barrel. Whereas if he hadn't have had any exposure for doing dodgy, he could mm -hmm. say, well, fuck, I'm going to the police. I don't do anything dodgy. Yeah. 
and he was over a barrel. Yeah. He was over a fucking barrel. Mm. So, you know, sometimes it's better off not to do dodgy things. That's why I, I declare all my Google Ads income. All my Google Ads income is declared. I declare it all, don't I? I declare it all. Yeah. Declare it all. Everything's declared, fuckers. Well, but and, it, it, it's even monitored by the tax department. They've got a record of what's yeah, in it. It's, well, it's fine. It's fine. I, I, I mean, I've got legitimate expenses. I've had to buy some camera equipment. Yeah. I've had to, you know, I've got travel. You, you've got to... If you can't do it honestly, it's just not worth the hassle. No, it's not, not worth the not hassle. Worth, yeah. Not worth the hassle, fuckers.